good weekend all. And yes, Ivy is saying hello to you. Remember, now she's just over five months old. There you go with the kisses. This is always in face with it. Yep, yep, they, they do like you. And it is our spider ETF video, and I'm going to put her down. And we are sitting here now at uh, Friday, and this is the 7th of October, 2022. So we got the jobs numbers today. They came out right in the center of the estimates, 263,000. The guesses fell between 250 and 275. Now, don't get me wrong. There were a few outliers at 300, some at the 225 I had seen, but they, they were way out there. This is where the mass were. And what does the market do? It goes into a tailspin. So you, you went crashing down in SPY, QQQ, DIA. Why? Because the market's been fighting. Yes, fighting. Everybody's looking for the, when the Fed is going to pivot. Instead of saying, the Fed's going to go until the Fed stops. I have no idea why people are always looking for the pivot. But you guess what? It's like people always looking for a bottom and people always looking for a top. They don't trade trends. Owning a brokerage company, I know this. I, I see what they do. They're going to be just at the right time to catch the turn. Instead of going with the trend, they fight it. Okay, there are good traders that ride the trend. They're waiting for the rallies in a bear market and the breaks in a bull market. This is a bear market. Most markets are waiting to get short in this type of environment. So, I think what you have to do is understand that until you get closer to and under, I think, a 200,000 job creation time, you got to fall another 63,000. I think that trying to pinpoint your pivot and your talk and all is nonsense. It's too strong of a market. I think you got to get closer to 150, and that's where the Fed, I think, is going to start doing its pivot. Now, I can't tell you the exact time that is or when it is, but I think those will be the way because the tidal wave will have happened. And once it gets going, it's like a tanker at sea. It doesn't just easily turn. You know, it takes miles to turn these things. Well, that's how it'll be. Have we seen the impact yet of the Fed numbers? Well, you're not, you didn't create 315,000 jobs. You were 50,000 roughly less. So yes, we are seeing some of the impacts. We're seeing some of that go on, but it's not enough yet. The Fed has to break demand. And they're not, their, their goal is to break it and catch it all at the same time without pause, causing the economy to tip over. It's going to be hard. So when we look at Goldman Sachs, I don't know. There's nothing friendly on a weekly chart there. You're still with lower highs, lower lows. As you break through 288.62, well, then you can challenge the double bottom in the 276 area that the market had made. All we did is rally back on a weekly chart into the resistance of the 18-week. If one were selling short there at 315.81, they probably have stops over 344.37, looking for the possibility of a test of 271, the 200 week moving average because it combines with the Bollinger Band. That is the ideal number the shorts want out at. We're going to get more banks starting to give us numbers now too. So as they all come in, remember it impacts everybody. Uh, when we look at momentum, it's still to the downside. So everything on this chart is bearish. And yes, I do think it's got the resistance at that number. As we look at KBE, you tell me the number that you see the market trying to hold. If you look at the weekly chart, as you came into this market, and let's see if I can get it down here. Yeah, here you come. The first major supports the 200-week average. Again, it held back here. You fought at it. You had a nice rally. Well, you would think it would do it again. Remember, it's a four-and-a-half-year average. It's an important number. So what did the market do? The market falls to it, and this was the week of the 30th, and you got your bounce into the resistance. On a weekly basis, that's the sell zone. Stop up there, looking to see, can you break through it to get to 42.17? That's what I think the pros are doing in that chart. In XLI, it's the same game. You fall down, you're looking for the bounce. You fall down, you're looking for the bounce. That does not mean I'm bullish in these numbers. That means short covering. 
There's a huge difference between covering a short. Now, here's the biggest problem. I know that 90% of you watching me don't go short. I can't help that. I can only tell you what I see in the trend. And that's what the market is doing. So is it a buy? No. That's maybe the right way to talk about it. Now, the energy is different. Energy got up today to 83.54, it cleared this high. So it should be where the market has got a higher high and a lower low, not instead of two arrows pointing down. I made a mistake, they, they didn't take. The, for some reason, it didn't take in the futures one either. Maybe I just forgot to do it, I don't know. I know I did the nut work, maybe I didn't save it right. But in any case, lower and low, higher high in uranium, you're sort of caught. I wish there were more talk in the United States about putting up small uranium uh, compounds again. In other words, nuclear plants. I, I, I never did understand why in America we ran away from that so fast. It makes no sense. The technology's there to make it very safe. We're not, hur we're not uh, prone in certain areas for hurricanes or tornadoes. I mean, there's areas of the country you can put it in that are on a relatively very stable area. But Still nothing going on with that. I think France is talking about it again. GLD, you lost the bearish embedded reading on a weekly chart. I wanna be short. Market came down, the combination of the 200 week and the Bollinger Band, you did slip a little, but you're not embedded. Goodbye, you traded. I don't want any part of it. Not from the short side, and it has no reason to be long yet. The gold miners, out of a trend. Lower and low, higher high, what else on the chart? Let's take a look. When you look at how this chart is set up, if you've taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, you know this is called an embedded slow stochastic reading. When it's lost, it gets lost by the red line closing over 21. If that happens, the odds favor. Price and the 18 week moving average are gonna make a run at each other. That's exactly what you're doing, you see it? Arc. So I know what Kathy Woods is doing. She's a bottom fisher. She's saying, hey, there are companies out there that are good. They're at the center of new technology. I'm just going to keep plowing into them because I'm never going to see them cheaper than this. Can't argue with her thoughts. But the pain of the investor with her, they have wiped themselves out. They have to hope she is very right for the next decade that'll come up. That, that's the reality. Do I disagree with trying to look for turning event uh, market times? No. Do I think it's a place to invest? No. Really simple, no. Uh, when the chart turns, I wanna be with her. Does that look like it has turned? Apple, I think Apple, I've said it to you here over and over now since the, before the phone came out. I got my phone today, love it. It's not easy to convert over the air the way that you do it at home. I can't get it done, in fact, I have to go to the store. Your old number to your new. I got every single app to work. I got my mail to work and everything. It's the cellular phone. Of course, what do I need that for on my phone? Huh? I can't get it to do it between the Verizon and the Xfinity. Xfinity is very large in Chicago and they work on the Verizon line. You're just basically transferring one to the other. Can't do it. No matter what we do, my IT people Terry looked at it with me. They tried, we can't get it done. So we'll go to the store tomorrow. It's heavy. So I'm coming off an iPhone 10. My, my IT person's got the iPhone. Is it a 12 or 13? 12. 12. And it's very heavy. Now he's got the Big Macs on the 12. So he's questioning, is it too heavy to own that? So he asked me for some reviews. I, once I get the cell working, it'll be phenomenal. I've got a clone that I can talk, I can get the calls in on. It's the strangest thing, but you, it won't receive. If I turn off my old phone, it won't work. Um, in any case, I still think you got a great shot to get to this lower band. I do think we're on borrowed time, but I think it's going down there. And as I told you, I had that earmark that I thought the price earnings was gonna to have to come down. It is. In Tesla, well, it looks like Twitter's gonna go through, so Tesla goes down. Could it be any simpler than that? And on Twitter, I shared with all of you, I had bought what I call throwaway money back here, right in here, 
of Twitter. And I said, it has nothing to do with the chart. It had to do with the fact that to me, it looked identical to LVMH buying Tiffany. I cracked up this week. I actually started laughing as I just heard yesterday that <laughs> Twitter had offered a lower price. Just <laughs> the way it turned out with LVMH days ago, and Twitter and, and, and Musk didn't take it. This is craziness. Now he's got to worry about what he's lined up in cash and everything. What do you think I did anyways? If you look at this chart, what would you do? You break out, you get over the upper bowl in Japan. I don't think you're staying there. You're not embedded and you hit the 100 week average. I was telling you that as it happened on the dailies. I have plenty of losing trades. Plenty. Okay, I'll, if you want one day, I'll go through those too. Um, TLT. Nah, I don't want to sell under a Bollinger Band. I see it's locked in. It's called the Gorilla Glue trade. You just stay there until you're going to get an embedded reading. These markets are saying, hey, the Fed is nowhere near through. But is it tradable? It isn't. Don't worry about it. There's always something else. Sorry, at the end of uh, the charts here. But I do want to remind you on something that I want to give you for free. The word is for free. If you've not seen my complete research package, I want to give it to you. Now, let me tell you what this entails. For two weeks, I will give you the ETF Spider video recordings in the morning, two weeks to my morning subscriber video, and two weeks to all my written updates, special reports that I write, besides the ones that I publish as videos and so on. The whole package. I don't want a credit card. I don't need anything, but in order to get it, we have to have all your information because in order to get the charts work, the exchange for the free quotes, they want to know who they're giving them to. Otherwise, I would just need a name and a phone number. That's it. I don't care where you live in the world. That's how they want to do it. It's their game. If you're going to get free quotes from them and it will be real time, away you go. Why not get it? Okay. So you're going to see everything I do. You get to make up your mind. Do I have any idea what I'm doing? Is it worthwhile for you to get it? It is not available if you've had a free trial before because I get people to get the trial, then they come back. I'm not going to honor that. All right. You, you've seen it. It's not worth it to you. You just keep wanting to get free ones so that I don't get paid. Not going to do that. At the end of the day, I think you'll find it's very much worth what it is. These are not expensive numbers. We make it up on the amount of people that we have as subscribers. So how do you get it? Go to my website. Number one, you could read all about it because when you go there, go under market research, or you can just take your cursor, follow my finger up here, put it up, an icon will appear, give it a click. It'll take you there. It explains everything. And away you go. It is free. So give it a try. I'm Ira Epstein. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you all Monday.